Hey everybody, I'm Greg Soul, and welcome to another CIQ demo. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use constructed inventories inside of a sender. So this is actually a really cool new feature for inventories that honestly has been needed for quite a little while. And so let me kind of break down how the documentation says you should do it, how I kind of prefer to do it. It's a comparison to smart inventories, right? So constructed versus smart and then maybe a couple of interesting little tidbits in there. So let's start by taking a look at a couple of existing inventories I have, right? So constructing the smart inventories, really what they do is they take existing inventories you have and they'll create new inventories from it, right? So you can kind of extract information out and build new inventories, which can be exceptionally useful in various scenarios. And I've already talked to some customers that are very successfully using these. So in this example, I have the dynamic custom inventory right here. And I'll go to the host section. You can see I have uh, one through 10. So host1.example.com through 10, and it pulls all kinds of information. You can see over here on the related group section, I have some that are Linux. Well, what I'm having them do is automatically sort into groups, right? So the related group section, those are going to be groups that they were automatically added to uh, as they were imported. And next, you'll see another group for the data center they are actually a member of. So you have the Virginia data center one, or you have the Dallas data center one. Now, if I go into this host individually, I can see that I've got a whole bunch of additional information in here, right? A bunch of variableized stuff that exists, like uh, uh, custom variables for these. Some are magic variables, so that Ansible underscore host is a magic variable, right? One that's known to Ansible has a specific purpose. The rest are just ones that I've created, right? So you can also see under here, I've got location uh, Dallas DC1. So it's actually got a location variable for each one of the hosts in this inventory that designate where it's from. I've also got a status here, whether it's active or inactive. So coming up, I'm going to be using status and location in these inventories when filtering these things out. I've also got a second inventory here that's just my generic host inventory because I wanted to just show you how you can actually pull from multiple uh, various inventories, multiple inventory sources, filter those into a constructed inventory. So here it's host44.example.com. You can see it's got a bunch of variableized information. It's also got the status and it's got the location. So I mentioned smart inventories earlier. And so what are smart inventories? Here's an example of a smart inventory. If I go to the details section, I like to click edit. What it allows you to do is create smart host filters. So constructed actually operates completely differently. It uses uh, two fields uh, instead of just one. So it actually has a limit and then I think a custom variable section, I believe is what they refer to it as. But in here, you create a smart host filter. And you can do some filtering. It is, I'm not going to mince words here, it's a pain in the butt to actually do. Um, whenever you're creating your filter, you like choose the various pieces, the and, the ors, uh, and you try and narrow it down there. And then once you get that completed, you click select and it will put it in there. And then once you save it, it will actually show you the total number of hosts. And that's great. And the hosts are there and available. And you could see that it brings over their variables, which is nice. The one thing it doesn't do, well, one of the things it doesn't do is if you look up here, there is no groups tab. So all that group information that you tend to uh, rely on inside of your standard inventories aren't available in smart inventories, right? So that completely goes out the window. So we're not going to use a smart inventory. Instead, we're going to do a constructed inventory. So I'm going to go into my inventory section here. I'm going to click add and constructed inventory from the list. Next, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it constructed demo. And in here, I have to put input inventory. So which inventories do I actually want to pull from? I'm going to be pulling from the dynamic custom and the generic inventory. You can see it automatically pops them up into the list there. I'm going to say select. And then I'm going to move down. I have a little bit of documentation I can expand here, but we're too lazy to read all of that because this is a video demo. So I'm going to just be talking about it really quick. We have the limit option and the source var section. So in the source var section, I have a chunk of data that I'm going to copy and paste in there. And then I'll tell you all about it. So first and foremost, you have plugin constructed. Since this is a constructed inventory, I have to tell it, hey, use the constructed inventory plugin right there. Strict can either be true or false. When it's true, if there's an error in my matching or in my groups or anything like that, it'll actually fail. So it won't uh, it won't parse and pull the new host. It'll actually give a failed message. So 
it's kind of good for, I would say, troubleshooting. That way you don't have unexpected results in there. If I put strict as false and there's an error, it just kind of quietly ignores it. And we'll go ahead and add uh, a host to the inventory as best it can. So it, it does what it can, but it's not going to give you any warning. So I would say go ahead and probably start with the true uh, on the strict method just for troubleshooting purposes. In case there's unexpected results, you'll see why, right? You're going to get a failed message in there. So under the group section here, I have two options. So I am actually creating these groups. So whenever I do is active colon and then any information, I'm actually creating that group and I'm doing it based on what I have under here. So if you recall in our variables, we have, let me expand that a little bit. I have status active and location Dallas DC one for this host, right? And so I'm gonna be first filtering on status. So if I pop into here, I've got status colon default. So what I'm really doing is I'm doing a Jinja operation where I'm piping that and I'm saying default. So if the variable doesn't exist, right? Then go ahead and make its default setting inactive. And so essentially you can ignore that uh, that pipe default portion to really get the message that I'm looking for, which is status equal active. I want to find things that are active. So if there's nothing there, like that variable doesn't exist, instead of error out and failing, so really this is kind of error handling is what I'm baking in here with this. So if there is nothing there, it'll just show up as inactive equals status or equals active, and so it'll fail. It'll fail in that response, right? So it won't match there. Um, and then uh, if it already has a definition and it is set to inactive, it won't match there either, right? Because inactive doesn't equal active. But if by chance it does say active, then it will match and it will get added to that group. You could say the uh, the same sort of thing is happening for uh, the Dallas one right here where I'm looking at the location. So I'm just creating a group named in underscore Dallas. And I'm saying if your location equals Dallas DC one, go ahead and add it to that group as well. So this is the method that they're actually recommending in the documentation. This works, so by default what I'm doing is I'm adding it, uh, the hosts that are uh, active, they're getting act, uh, added to this is active group, and then the uh, Dallas hosts are getting added to that. So now I have two groups that they've gotten added to, um, but it's not a combination of the two here, right? I'm just saying, hey, if you happen to be active, so this is gonna pick up all the Virginia uh, assets as well, right? The stuff that's in the Virginia data center that happens to be active. That'll get added into that group. Well, as also down in the uh, in Dallas one, it's going to be adding inactive ones. So technically, it's not exactly in the format we want, right? It's created these two groups. So now we have to kind of stitch those together and we're going to do it in the limit section. So think of the limit section kind of like a limit in a regular job template where I'm just defining what hosts I want to uh, kind of limit down and, and operate against. So in here, I'm using the ampersand characters for these two groups. So if it is active and also in uh, in Dallas, so if it happens to be in both of those groups, then go ahead and add it to the inventory. So I'm going to click save here. And it doesn't synchronize by default. So I'm going to go ahead and click sync. And so we should watch this total number of hosts as the job runs. And it should update momentarily. There you go. So now we have our four host added. So it really did, it created a, a big group of everybody active, a big group of everybody in Dallas, and then it cross-referenced the two with the limit option and said, hey, if you happen to be in both of those groups, and it pulled that subset of information out. So that's good and it works fine. Here's another example that does the exact same thing. So in here, I'm gonna expand this a little bit so that you can see my uh, group section here. So I'm using the plugin constructed strict true again, only in groups, I'm creating a group name constructed. And I'm saying, hey, the status equals active and right, you see that that operator there and the location is also in Dallas. So the only hosts that are even making it through, uh, through my filtering here are going to be the ones that meet all of my criteria, they're going to go into constructed done. And then uh, scroll down and hit edit. It's so much easier for me to look at this in the edit menu. You can see that the uh, limit option here, I've actually got it set to the constructed group. So what this means is I can kind of you reuse this sort of thinking for all of my constructed inventory. So I could really have my uh, conditional in there of like 
all the things I need, add them to the constructed group, and then always have the limit set to constructed. That way it will just add that one group. So it kind of knocks down the number of things I have to kind of keep track of. These things aren't as much snowflakes, right? Uh, a lot of the, um, a lot of this uh, configuration is just copy and paste. I can always have the limit there set to constructed, um, and I can always have the group that it's creating be just the constructed group. Again, this is kind of my preference on how to do it. It's not necessarily something that um, there's no wrong or right to this, I would say necessarily. This is just how I like to do it. To me, it makes a little bit more sense to my brain um, than having erroneous information <laughs> like come in here and then I have to use the limit to filter it down. I'm sure there's a situation where it makes sense to do that if potentially you wanted to uh, do some troubleshooting, you could adjust the limit on the old one and be able to see information from both those divergent groups. Maybe that would help in that respect. But for me, this just keeps a little bit more straightforward and simple. And again, it's going to return the exact same information. So it's not like there's a difference in those two. It's just two ways of getting the exact same info. But I'm going to pop into the host section. You could see it's captured the uh, four from the various areas. You could see my location here is Dallas and my status happens to be active as well, right? So it meets that criteria and it's got all the variableized information along with it. But something of interest here is if I go to the group section, all of the groups that existed from those individual inventories now get imported in with that data, right? So I can actually click on Linux and go to hosts and I can actually see the uh, members that were in those Linux host groups, right? So all that group information gets brought over and it's not just the group information, it's also any variableized info that was associated with that group in the other inventory, right? So theoretically, on the Windows group, I probably have Windows connection information in there, right? Like I'm setting up WinRM uh, variableized information to be able to kind of connect in. And so all of that info gets pulled in with it, right? So all the important bits that I'd put in those groups with uh, with uh, the variables and stuff like that, that's getting pulled into. So not just the individual host with their variables, but also the uh, variableized info inside the group. So this is one of the powerful things of constructed inventories. It's kind of all of the best parts of a smart inventory, only it's more granular. It's like so much easier for me to build the filters in here to get the information I want. But now I also get groups as well. So let's look at some other interesting information. On this one, I'm going to hit the edit button because again, I just like to look at it a little bit easier this way. You can see I am uh, picking the exact same inventories as my inventory sources. You can see in here, I'm using the Linux group as a limit. So only stuff that happens to be in the Linux group from either one of those inventories. In here, you can see I'm calling plugin constructed, but nothing else in there. I'm not creating any special groups. I'm not doing any filtering. I'm really just saying, hey, if it happens to be in this one group, just pull it over here. So again, it's like a nice kind of easy way to pull that extra information in and filter things out. So you can see I have hosts in here. I'm going to have a lot more hosts because I'm just looking for stuff that happened to, to live in the, uh, the Linux group. And then again, groups, it's pulling all of the grouped information again, right? So again, all the power of pulling in those groups with its configuration. And I thought I would show you one extra little thing on this demo four, and that is how you can actually build some variables. So not only can you build groups, but I can build custom variables as well. So if I add a compose section, like you can see right down here, I created some just random custom variable named it special underscore IP and I'm pulling the Ansible underscore host portion and I'm sticking that in as the IP address. You could also see that I'm adding a default in there. So if there isn't an un uh, Ansible underscore host specified, I'm putting a, a piece of default information in there. So I put this specifically in here because I have pulled from random inventory sources before where I was getting uh, kind of gibberish information out, but somewhere in there, it actually gave the IP address. Now this host wasn't fully qualified, so I couldn't reach it and I needed to create an Ansible underscore host. So this really in this compose section, I could make it Ansible underscore host colon, and then whatever variableized field brings over that IP address. Like if it's just something like host underscore IP or um, EC2 underscore IP. I mean, you get the idea, right? Like if you have a piece of information that you need it to be in a different variable name, 
maybe a magic variable name, it's a really easy way to kind of build it in the compose section. So you can see I'm making special IP for Ansible underscore host. Let me look in the host section here. Let me grab one of my hosts out. Let me expand its variables and you can see right here special underscore ip it's created that variable right just using the uh, ip address that was in ansible underscore host so another kind of cool little feature uh, that you can add into your uh, constructed inventories hopefully this uh, inspires you to do some interesting stuff with constructed inventories if you have any questions or comments i would love to see them if you would like any help with this i'd love for you to reach out to us we love doing Ascender support out there, migration, support on installation, configuration, all that good stuff. And I love talking to customers. So happy automating, happy uh, inventory constructing, and we'll see you next time. Bye.